hi guys today we're going to finish off the art journal so uh i was going to just sort of put music to this and then upload it but i think it'll be nice to try and walk you through some of the steps here i just want to say as well thank you so much for your wonderful comments i always love your um insight and like your take on things i'm never really sure you know uh, if the videos are going in the right direction or not. So I really appreciate that. And I feel like they're such thoughtful comments. So I really, really love them. And um, they have helped so much this year. And so I wanted to say thank you for that. Okay, so we finished the inside of the journal last time. So we collected all the papers. Um, we went shopping and I kind of showed you the things that I was looking at and so we will put some more of those things into the journal today. So the first thing I'm going to do in this video is create this little applique piece for the front of the journal. So I looked at a few different options here. I looked at just making one out of sequins. Uh, I, so I took some sequins off the shirt, off the front of the shirt there and I was going to use those to make something and again you don't have to do this step if you have an applique if you have a brooch or a you know pocket or something else off a uh, t-shirt or off a couch if you have a little bit of needle point uh, or petite point embroidery uh, you could use that as well you could make some, um, you know, floral or ribbon, like uh, some, what am I trying to say? Some fabric or ribbon flowers to put on the front as well. That would be really nice. So I tried a few different things. You can see here that I'm just showing you, if you've never used one of these embroidery hoops, you want it to be taut in the frame uh, and so that it doesn't move when you pull the sides. So I don't show you a lot of the process here, but you can see that I have just penciled on the design and then I'm just following that uh, with little stitches. It's nothing really, um, you know, structured or anything. I'm just kind of, I penciled it in and I am just uh, doing little stitches around that design. And you might want to do some initials. You might want to trace something else that's important to you. So once I took that out, I realized that it sort of shrunk a bit. So I actually had to, I think I ended up um, putting some wadding underneath it and then uh, just tacking it onto another piece of fabric to, to stretch it back out. Okay, so I have decided that I'm going to use that for the front and I have this little bit of leather left over. I think it was just a bit of leather off Amazon. So you can just get sort of little 8x10 pieces of leather off Amazon. I'll see if I can uh, find this one. It was maybe four or five years ago, but it was just called Champagne Gold Hide or something like that. And it was just a, you know, 8x10 piece or something. And then I had the tulle that you saw there and that was also, I think, a remnant. So you can go to your local fabric shops and they should have a remnant table. Um, and I, we had three beautiful remnant shops or fabric shops in, in Brisbane. And so I used to always go in there and check their remnant tables and they had just gorgeous embroidered silks and all kinds of beautiful fabrics. Now that I think about it, we were really spoiled, but um, I think you can find like even mood fabrics online or I think B&J fabrics, they have, you know, lace appliques and, you know, pieces of lace or pieces of silk and things you can buy. You can even get silk off Amazon or Etsy. So, so if you just type in silk by the yard, then it should come up. But so here you can see I have some eyelets that I got from Walmart. Just it was just a couple of dollars, I think. And you just I, I was thinking to use that for the front of the book there. And I actually end up putting it at the back, but this is a good together. So I didn't want to take this out because um, you can see that that's just how you put the eyelet to, together. You've got to hammer that uh, down and then it will be in place. But 
uh, I didn't I, I didn't want to take and so here you can see the blanket um, satin the, around from around the blanket that I'm going to use for the ribbon but I didn't want to take these parts out because I feel like these are really important parts of the process and they might actually help you you know depending on like what you're going to use so the eyelet might work better for you at the front you might want two eyelets uh, you know with with a double ribbon closure which would be really beautiful so so you can see here I'm like just using the back of the scissors to score and uh, I didn't I didn't score it quite enough so it's still bending but it's not a problem because that's just going to be hidden under the back of the spine at this point um, so you can see here this is what I ended up going with it's just a piece of glitter uh, paper from Michaels and then we have the leather pocket with the embroidered piece. So the, the little emblem. So then I grab the tool and I, I'm trying to sort of still figure out what to do here. So I wanna drape this fabric across and gather this somehow as well. And then to add another layer and also to soften out those sequins so they're not so sort of bright, I decide I want to put the some tulle over the top of that so we're sort of creating a little ball skirt for the front of the journal So this is one of my favorite tricks. You cut a length of the embroidery thread and then you just find one of the strands and you pull from the top and you can see here that it all comes up and then it goes back out. So if you need to use the rest of the thread, you know, thickly like that, you can and it doesn't, um, you know, it's not going to knot. So you basically have now have yourself a piece of cotton um, and you haven't not knotted the embroidery thread. So one of the ladies at a um, embroidery shop showed me this and I really love that. It means that you pretty much can have cotton in any color that you need, you know, to mend something or to sew something just from the embroidery flosses that you have. So, uh, you know, you don't have to buy extra spools of cotton. Okay, so what I've done here is I've folded the tool into three and I am just gathering along the top edge. So I'm not a seamstress. I, I don't really know if I do things the exact right way, but uh, this is just how I do it. So um, it's pretty effective. So if you're new to this and you're unsure, you can put a knot in the um, bottom of the thread, but I generally just like to you can see here that I'm just tying knots straight onto the fabric and then I'm just actually holding it and sort of helping letting my finger sort of guide the fabric onto the needle so I can do this fairly quickly So you could see there that I was unsure, so I tried to think about maybe making a little flower out of the tool for the front, but I went with the pocket. And then, so after I did all that to create the uh, part of the back cover, I ended up just tearing that piece off because I was thinking to use it at the front here. 
and then I go back and I cut out the piece of the skirt that we got at Target and so I'm just doing the same thing I am going to create some uh, knots at the beginning here and just gather this along as well So I have sped some of this up and edited some of it out. So it does take a, a little while to do this part, but I think it's just um, really impactful at the end. And th this is kind of part of the thing that brings this whole journal together in a really nice way. And what's nice about it is that you don't need any fancy materials. You need, uh, you know, some embroidery floss and a needle and you can, you know, create something really magical. I'm always fascinated when I see the uh, like the haute couture um, dresses coming together and it's and it's basically by someone sitting there hand sewing you know just taking hours and hours to hand sew something so you know you can find a lot of those things on Pinterest for ideas as well I think I have some in my stitching um, folder on Pinterest and the more you know time you take the more beads you add or sequins or things like that that you have you'll come up with a really beautiful um, finished product so here again I have folded the tool into three and I'm just creating petal shapes so I'm just doing a round sort of petal shape along the top here And so once I've cut out along the whole line here, I do the same thing that we did before. I grab a piece of uh, cotton and then I gather the bottom straight edge to create and then pull that together to create a flower. Okay, so you can see here that I have made this flower and then I have these floral stamens. These are off Amazon. So I will try and link these below. And again, if I forget to link something, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will get that link for you. Just life is always so busy that sometimes I forget. So I ended up sewing that in and sewing a couple of the sequins in the middle of the flower too to tie it all together. I think I created a small flower at some point too. I'm not sure if I showed it, but just a little one to go on there as well. So what I have here is just a $5 book from Barnes & Noble. So it was a few years old and it's got the really nice old sort of cotton feeling paper in it, which is the nice sort of aged color. So I'm basically just using different pieces of this book through the journal. And you can see that I've torn out some pages here and I actually stack them. I don't stack them straight together. You can see that they're off centered everywhere and I'm creating a little uh, sort of junk journal style book that is, you can see there I've overlapped them a different way. So and the funny thing is here, I found a page in the end of the book where Mark Twain, one of the Bronte sisters and Ralph Waldo Emerson all say that they didn't like Pride and Prejudice. One of them said even a library with no books would be better with the absence of this book so it's pretty um they were pretty harsh in their in their um you know critiques of her book 
And so I think it just goes to show, um, you know, it's, just, it's one of the most well-loved books of all time now. Okay, so you can see how simply I've done this, um, you know, I'm binding this just with the needle and the embroidery thread and I've gone through one side, come in the other and I'm tying it in the middle. And like we talked about yesterday about making little, um, you know, pamphlet style books out of cards or something, you could easily do something like this as well. Just bind it so simply like that. So here we, uh, I think I'm just starting to glue everything down on the front of the book. So you can see that I just have huge amounts of glue there and I am just sort of placing everything. And I'm also putting glue on the front so that I can glue all of these pieces into place. And so, like I said, you know, I'm showing you the design process here, but you can use, and you can see I left the sort of side of that pocket uh, open so I can get you know, the little book out, it's kind of like a tuck spot. And so again, you might have an old skirt or an old shirt, or you can even find things like sometimes I've found something on the sales rack somewhere that's five or $10 and I um, like a silk shirt or something that doesn't fit, but it's a really nice color. And you can cut that up and use that, um, you know, for one of these. One of the things I love about this is how large it is and how wide it is and it's still not very heavy so I really enjoy that. Okay so it's another day and today we um, are going, to, today at the time we were just putting on charms so the majority of the book is put together now we need to finish the back cover and I am just creating some little charms here so I got these bobbins as well at Walmart so you probably have something like this as well um, around the home I didn't and I just wanted to use this and kind of show you that you could make this really nice you could put little different colored bits of um, you know embroidery thread in here you could bead something and also wrap it around in there you could be really creative with those and just make some really nice uh, charms and then I also use a, uh, what's the little tool called that, you, you know, the needle threader. So I use a needle threader as well as a charm. And basically I'm just trying to show you that you can use all sorts of little bits and pieces that you have uh, to create this really nice experience and journal. Some of them might be attached to memories, like these ones just signify sort of the hand sewing that has gone into this journal. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I have a piece of ribbon that I have sewn together and I have poked the ribbon through from a hole that I created in the spine here and I'm gonna glue that onto the back of the spine there and, that, and it holds this pencil so you will see this come together more and you'll see that I cover up the back spine where that ribbon is. Um, but for now, I'm just putting it through the middle of the spine. So you can see that this pink paper is going to go over where that ribbon's poking out. And I actually attach two little things like this. So I have this pencil here and then I attach another little, um, little fairy bottle of glitter from another part of the spine and those both ideas I got from so you can see here that I'm closing up the spine and that will be underneath it but both of these ideas I got from meditative scrapbooking so if you haven't seen her channel she has some beautiful journals and beautiful ideas and I really really love her channel it's one of my favorites So one of the things I love to do is crochet with cotton or with, you know, something other than wool. So I've got the twine there. I did some sort of some crocheted lace for the along the spine.
Okay, so all of these elements now are in the journal and the journal's basically done. I think there's a couple of things that I want to just do. Um, you can see I really love when you pick it up and it all sort of gives a little slight shift and jingle. But there are a couple of things here that I want to do and uh, one of them is we put the back flap so I actually ended up putting a double back on the um, journal so it's almost like a, a false back and then a back with and I create a pocket out of it so I'll show you that then we also just uh, make some pockets for the inside as well so I'm just going to let you watch the rest of this. I'm under a bit of a time crunch and I want to get back and do some more uh, videos. So um, I will let you watch this, but if you have any questions, you know, just ask me below and I can explain them more in another video or, you know, do a video about them. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Bye.